How is it going, folks? And happy Monday. Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 45. We ended things last episode with a whole host of sales, and Andrani was on his way out of the club. And I say was because <laughs> he snubbed Chesterfield. Not a fan of the crooked spar in Chesterfield, it turns out. That isn't to say that we won't try and sell him today. I do feel like his ESC slot could be valuable, and there is still interest in him. You know what? Kicking things off, I'm just gonna offer him out immediately. Now, of course, I appreciate the last transfer special was on Friday. You've had a whole weekend of watching football, going out, living your lives. You've probably forgotten about what happened two days ago. I can't remember what I ate yesterday. So how can I expect you people to remember anything? I don't know. Maybe my brain just doesn't function. But let's just have a quick look at the transfer history, what we got done last episode, as a little reminder. Batumba left the club for 76,000. Stevenson and Lissa also left the club for some really good money. Callum Moreland has left the building for £50,000. Definitely could have got more money for him, but his face just makes me angry. And of course, another player who never really lived up to his billing was Gabe Forsyth. He has left to join Peterborough, and with all that money recouped, we are sat here with £5 million in the balance. Of course, some of that was the transfer fees that we're getting paid in instalments. Ignore the transfer budget here, that is absolute nonsense. But in terms of wages and stuff... I'm feeling good about this year. Now, one little thing to note is the financial fair play in League One. Our wage limit for this year is £36,000. Our current wage is for this period, apparently at 18000 Saying that, our current actual wage spend is 30000 I assume that's just because only first team players count towards the financial fair play in League One. Truth is, I don't really know. Either way, I'm not going to let the prospect of financial fair play limit what we do here in League One. I want to make it out of this division. We've been on this ascendancy league by league by league this year like an absolute bulldozer. And with a media prediction this year of 12, and while the League One pre-season billing not putting us right up there towards the top, we definitely need to add players today. With all that said and done, today is a transfer special. Let's run the intro and get some transfers done, shall we? Today, by the way, is episode number 45 of Park to Prem. I can't remember if I mentioned that earlier. Thank you for the ongoing support on this series. I'm glad so many of you guys are enjoying it. Of course, of all the players that we sold over the course of last episode, the actual first team is pretty much untouched going into this year. And in fact, the bench is still looking quite good. Simkin is no longer around, but Louis Jones, I mean, he's an okay backup goalkeeping option. We have also got Isaac Warren, the 16-year-old who's capped for England's under-18s. He could arguably just be the backup goalkeeper this year. But with Keeley's injury proneness, I feel like of all the positions in our starting team... Mm, maybe goalkeeper's an area to look at. There is no denying we sold a lot of defenders over the course of last episode. When you look at the first team, of course, we have our starting back four. We have Luigi Gasperi, the new youngster who, to be honest, could find himself playing in the first team on the regular at centre-back. Really rate him highly. Brody Spencer is there and Bamba is around, can technically play centre-back. I don't want to have to play him at centre-back. And of course, with Andrani also potentially leaving the club should an offer come in, the reality is that today we need to find a right back, a left back, and at least one new centre back. Midfield wise, I am feeling calmer about things. Maybe the option to bring in one more defensive midfielder. At the moment, we have, of course, Timmy, who is our starting centre defensive mid. He plays alongside Stuart Masters. And I feel like these two guys, they have that understanding. And Bamba is just a good, versatile defensive mid option to have behind them. And then, really, the only other defensive mid option we've got is Brody Spencer, who is just the ultimate utility man. Can play left back, can play right back. But the reality is, he's not quite of the standard that should we have an injury, I want to have to stick him in the team for like a month to fill in a spot. He's a good backup, but he really should just be a backup. I feel like the one area of the team where I'm rather happy with where things are is the attacking mid department and the striking situation, which feels a little bit weird because we've not signed a load of new players in this area, despite the fact we've got a few players in this area moving on at the end of the year. But of course, with the likes of Sam Fay, Espinosa and Klaus Jaeger, also in the team, these are all youngsters that I think are good enough to feature regularly in the team, be these super sub options, and with their insane potential and their young ages, I don't really want to deny them first team opportunities. All of that is to say that currently we have 20 first team players in this team, and my shopping list is a goalkeeper, left back, right back, centre back, defensive mid. I don't know why I've counted five like that. I'm an idiot. Maybe I just don't like using my little finger. No idea. Who counts like th this? 
I don't know. Uh, why do people watch me on the internet? I'm just looking through players that we've got scouted here that are rated highly. Uh, Louis Piquet here, apparently he's an ongoing part of one of our focuses. Where does this guy play? He plays in Belgium. The Belgium amateur leagues love to throw us some players. He actually looks really, really good, doesn't he? 21 years old. 20. Thing is, I don't play with a right attacking mid, and I don't play with a regular centre mid, and I don't need depth at centre attacking mid, and yet I quite like the look of this guy. I've mentioned it before, the Belgium Amateur Leagues produce some mad players in Football Manager. Just keep your eye out for teams at this level. They produce some really good players. Lewis here is not bad. Not sure he's what we need. I suppose if we want to find a positive here, the fact there are players just popping up in this screen here that are catching my eye and all the scouting we've done lately should mean there are some good players out there like Manuel, Manuel's rubbish. Okay, Manuel's rubbish, we move on. Whoever suggested this guy, incorrect to suggest him. It is actually kind of funny, isn't it? The amount of scouted players we've just got here from all kinds of weird and wonderful leagues. I absolutely adore my scouts. They, they love to just throw random players on my desk, like Lamine Costa, who has some really good physicals. He's another centre mid slash striker. I don't need a player like this, but he looks quite fun being from Guinea-Bissau. Why is it that the nation is called Guinea-Bissau, but someone from Guinea-Bissau is Bissau Guinean? That is one of the world's greatest mysteries. Now, I have got all these French players that I've been scouting and players from elsewhere that are just work permit likely under the age of 19. It's worth noting it's the 27th of June. A load of players are about to be released. And on the 1st of June, there might be some good players out there. One thing I have got to consider is, are there any youth team players that I could promote to fill some of those gaps in the team? Of course, we've got players like Zanon, who I signed this year, who could arguably be a decent little centre-back for us. But, I mean, is he good enough to be that squad centre-back that I might need? I wonder. I mean, according to our staff, we've got all these first team candidates. Uh, it's worth noting the likes of Pritchard and Edwards, obviously, just players that we've we've got going back to their parent clubs that we've got them on loan from having sold them to the parent clubs at the end of the year. So they're not really eligible for promotion. But of all the other players here, Liam Holt, Benjamin Hurst, Paul Clark, there's all these players here who... I'll be honest, some of them I can't even remember. Paul Clark here, centre-back, signed from Ross County. Ah, one of the Ross County lot. I mean, he's not bad. It's not that exciting, but he is only 19. I mean, Liam Holt here actually looks like he could be a really good player. We picked him up for £11,000 from Sterling. There is some interest in him. It's not from teams that are going to have massive budgets, the likes of uh, Partick Thistle and Gillingham. But there are players like this guy that I do sit and look at and go, well, mm, are you good enough to play in the team? And if you're not, should I be cashing in on you? To talk about the need for a defensive mid, would Liam Holt be a bad backup defensive mid? If I just compare him with Mbamba. Liam Holt. Hmm... He is maybe just a slight step down. Maybe Brody Spencer's a fairer comparison. I mean, when you compare him to Brody Spencer, he's not a million miles away. I suppose the question has to become, is he going to play regularly in the first team? Yes or no. And if he's not good enough to play for our first team, is he just better served playing in the under-21s and playing regular minutes? That's probably wise. One thing I've not done this transfer window yet is just go through the home nations youth teams just to see if there's any good players out here. You can see I have plenty of players scouted. Players like Adam Maurice who uh, he's contracted to Aberdeen, has really good potential. He's a left winger, but I look at the potential and get excited. The value looks exciting too. He's probably not going to want to join me, is he? Adam. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't want to join me. Wait, okay, I'm, I'm looking at the under-19s of Scotland. There is a 16-year-old who's a free agent. He was at Aberdeen and they've released him. Is he good? He doesn't look very good. But, but he, hmm, I mean, he's 16. He's got caps for Scotland. Is it just stupid to sign him on £200 a week? I almost feel like it's not. I'm going to make him an offer, and it, I can't offer him too much, but I'll, I'll make him an offer, and I'm going to hope that he accepts it. And whilst we're scouting him, I'm going to obviously make him a priority. Let's find out if he's any good. Jordan Mullen here, prioritise assignment. Tell me about Jordan Sooner, scouts. Is he good? There's another guy here who plays for Ross County. Uh, Luke Shield, 18 years old, Ross County. We've been here before. He's actually just a free agent. Can we just steal him? I can't steal him. What I'll do is I'll add him to a shortlist because we know how Ross County operate. They will just release him randomly in the near future. And when that happens, I need to know it's happening. Scotland is a bit different, if I'm not mistaken. I think most of their players' contracts expire at the end of May as opposed to the end of June anyway, which is probably why the Aberdeen youngster's on a free. He is the only player out there that stands out other than Rory Wilson, who's a free agent from Aston Villa. Um, he's really, really good. He's on £17,000 a week. He has five caps for Scotland. 
Yeah, I was going to say, there's no way I can afford him. I don't know why I've tried. Next up on my list of things to do, uh, the England national youth team. I feel like there's a lot less likely to be players here who want to join us. In the under-18s, Isaac Warren, our own player, is the only player from below the championship in the team. Under 19s, uh, there is Toby Hins, who plays at Colchester. I've had a look at this guy before. I think I tried to sign him when he had a release clause in January, and then he just signed a new contract with Colchester. He does look very, very good, doesn't he? Apparently, he won't be interested. Uh, he might be interested in a loan instead. Mate, you play for a League Two club. I like the look of him. We'll keep him on the radar. The other player playing in League One is Alex Klee here. Is he interested in a move to us? No, apparently we're not the right move for his development. I think this might be the kind of thing where when he turns 18, he decides we'll be amazing for his development. He looks very, very good. Who was it last year in Park to Prem at Guernsey? There was an English centre mid. I can't believe I can't remember the guy's name. We signed him from AFC Wimbledon. He was never like the best player in the world. But I think we signed him from AFC Wimbledon, who were in League One, and he was playing for the kind of youth teams a bit like some of these players. And he went on to be amazing for us, just a squad player forever. That's kind of what I would love to find right now. I don't think we're going to find it as a newly promoted League One team, though. I always get my hopes up here where I see League One players playing for the England youth team, and then I realise they're just on loan at League One clubs from the likes of Manchester United and Man City. Uh, reality is, not going to be able to sign any of these players. I have already had a look at Northern Irish players not that long ago, as you can see by some of the scout reports here. I think Carl Ash was one of the better players but he's a really injury-prone striker, which is not what I need right now. The reason, by the way, why I'm going through the home nations is because these players don't need, you know, work permits and stuff to actually join us. We could just sign them if, and it's a big if at this point, if they were any good. None of them seem to be any good. Last but not least, we've got the Republic of Ireland who have a random player, Richie Ramis here, who's playing for Dam in Spain. I love the fact that I know that Dam is one of the Spanish youth teams. I've become that much of an expert with Spanish youth teams now. I look at a team like Dam and I go, I know you guys, you have good players. In fact, you can see here, Victor Manuel is their key player, already got him scouted. Armand Company also got him scouted. Yeah, we know all about Dam. Niall Kelly here is very good. At 16 years old, plays for Longford. Who is interested in him? Some of the big guys in Ireland. He's, he's probably not going to want to join me, is he? I was going to ask his agent about a move, but I realise he doesn't have an agent, so yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, I've offered nothing. They've said they might need more money. Uh, I'll, look, okay, lads, I will pay you. I'll offer 20. Maybe they'll consider that. I feel like for, for that kind of money, he could be quite good. Love the determination. Love the physicals. Wing back in the making. Also, he plays in the first division of Ireland. So it's not even like the top division. Is he in their kind of media dream 11 as one of their better players? I'd assume he is. It doesn't look like he is. Is there, is there any other good young players here? There's a 20 year old winger. He is, he's not good. I think of all the players we've looked at at different nations around the UK and Ireland, this guy is the best, Niall Kelly, so I'd love to sign him. He's probably not going to want to join me. Liam Cooper here's contract's about to expire at Newcastle United. I really don't need another striker, but would he be a terrible free transfer? I say that, and then I realise he has nine determination and he's unambitious. So whilst he might have all this potential, he's probably not going to fulfil it. Then again, it is a free transfer. So sh should you just see how much he's asking for? You know, we can test the waters here. He wants £275. For that kind of money, I'm willing to take a punt. Liam, I will take a punt on you, but it does need to be a three-year deal. Three-year deal, £300 a week. Uh, he might be good. He might be awful. But you know what? He's in the national youth team. He has some potential. He might not be bad. And actually, when you look at him, the mould of player he is does actually look quite good. This is a rare sight in Football Manager. Shrewsbury have stolen one of my youth intake players before a youth intake. I feel like they could elaborate on this a little bit more in Football Manager. But yes, Brody has decided he's going to go play for Shrewsbury. I would be more upset, except his potential suggests he's not very good. Longford have delayed our offer for Kelly. I'll offer a bit more. I don't even know if he's going to want to join us, but I, ne I need him. I want him. He could be great. And I've offered 28,000. They've just accepted that. Now let's see if he actually wants to talk to us. Ah, Liam Cooper. I was looking to sign him, wasn't I? Uh, yeah, he's gone to Norwich. Never mind. Annoying news. Uh, Kelly doesn't want to join us. He's not interested in a move as his age means he'll be unable to complete the move in the near future. I mean, to be fair, you wouldn't be joining us at 18 months. It's a fair point. Also, my scouts have looked at him and they don't like his potential. Maybe a bullet dodged, but I will just add him to the watch list indefinitely. We'll see how his career pans out. Totally forgot this sale might have been happening. It is happening. Uh, Shipston leaving for £25,000. Not a load of money received. 
believe, but a player who's not really been good enough for us for the last couple of years. Played a lot, first half of the season just gone and wasn't able really to step up to a satisfactory level. So yeah, £25,000 for him. Not too shabby. Now, Javain McCulloch is one of our hot prospects. He's actually turned down the option to go back to Ebsley for another year. He spent the last two years on loan with them and done really, really well. Not sure if I've got a spot for him in the first team right now, but actually, with his current ability, he's really not a bad attacking mid slash striking option. Talked about the fact I didn't really want to sign anyone in that area. But maybe just promoting him isn't the most mad idea. Ah, okay, now Bohemians and Derry City have made offers for Kelly. Now, because those teams are based in Ireland, he can join them immediately. So, uh, yep, yeah, don't think we're going to be signing him. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is cool to see. Ricky D and Callum Goldsmith now considered homegrown at club. And you can see here a list of players who will get homegrown at club in the future. There's quite a long list here, isn't there? It's not really something I've given much thought to, but when you actually look at our players in our team, we've got a fair few players now homegrown at club and a few more on their way. Players like Murphy and Goma could be invaluable down the line at being homegrown at club. And there's more players like Guerrero, who of course has some really exciting potential set to get homegrown at club. Sometimes that's an issue when you climb up the leagues quite quickly. I'm beginning to think that if we make it into Europe in like six years time, we will be prepared for that. Is six years too ambitious? Two years in League One, two years in the Championship, two years in the Prem, European football. Might be a bit ambitious, who knows? We might look back on that in six years and laugh at me. I say that because I feel like the step up from the National League to League Two is kind of small. And I suppose, as is indicated by this prediction of seventh, the step up to League One is a bigger one. And actually, when you look at the list of teams in our specific League One, there's loads of teams you'd associate with kind of the Championship here. This is a really brutal league to get out of in real life. In Football Manager, it could be tricky for us. And of course, after this year, we go into perhaps the most unfair league in world football, the championship, where you have all the millionaire owners throwing money at their teams. And then every year, the free relegated teams with parachute appointments just go back up. I mean, that's what usually happens. It might not happen this year in Football Manager or in real life, but yeah, this is not a league you want to get stuck in. Last year, we didn't get stuck in it with Guernsey. I would not be surprised if we get stuck in it this year. I'm just looking through the list of players here that I've got scouted that don't need work permits. And there are some good players here, but then I go to the scouting centre list of players and it, it just looks immediately more exciting. Even if half these players don't want to join me, the star ratings make my eyes widen. I also realise that half these players, you know, wouldn't get work permits. So kind of iron up an Anderlecht youngster. I mean, it's a lovely idea. He's not going to be able to sign for us, is he? Or is he? This guy looks quite good. Why are my scouts spending time looking at this guy? Ah, he might be interested in a loan move. I mean, I don't really want to loan a striker. I've got too many young strikers I need to develop on my own. I've not got time to develop Andalex youngsters. No offers for Andrani. Oh, I really wish he'd gone to Chesterfield. I was umming and ironing about it most of the weekend, and then I came to the decision. Yeah, I'd let him go if they, you know, made the bid and he was happy with it. Then he wasn't happy with it. Now I'm stuck with him. First signing of the transfer window, maybe Jordan Mullen has agreed to join us. This was the guy released by Aberdeen. He is injury prone and inconsistent, but it is also just a free transfer. I mean, he's 16. Is he worth a punt? I will say now, his current ability doesn't look as exciting as I hoped it might, but I am tempted just to give him a contract. But £250? Nah, you know what? This is silly, isn't it? I can see that now. Ah, uh, sad news here. No 50% profit of sell-on on Bradley here or Moon. M Moon's been released by Shrewsbury. We sold him for 200k and 18 months later, they've just released him. I mean, I need a backup centre-back. How much does he want? Mm, it's tempting, but then again, he's not been playing for Shrewsbury in League One. Well, he has, just not very well. Not sure I want him as a backup. Simkin has left the club. We knew that was going to happen. I wanted to renew his contract. He wanted £2,000 and yeah, I can't bring him back. <laughs> oh, Gucci's contract's expired and he's not left the club yet. I've got some bad news, mate. Not paying you £400 anymore. Bye. Okay, it's the 1st of July. It's the big day. Players have been released. I'm looking through the players released in England. Cade Gordon has been released in this save game. He'd be amazing for us, but there is absolutely no way I can sign him, is there? Yeah, I don't know why I thought I could. I mean, I didn't think I could. I knew I couldn't, but I just looked at him and thought, he'd be amazing for us. He plays a Liverpool. I'm a biased Liverpool fan. Yeah, no, no chance. Farid Alpha Ruperecht is one of the most fantastic names ever. He's just been released by Man City. He was on loan at Coventry last year. Does, does he want to join us? 
No, he wants us to get promoted from League One. Don't think I'm going to be doing that before you find a club for it. He's annoyingly good as well. There's also this bloke from Norway that's just been released by Crystal Palace. Uh, I mean, he's good. No, no way he's going to join me. I don't know why I'm even looking at these players, to be honest. Apparently, Stefan Emblemsvag is a player that I have on my shortlist who's six months away from having his contract expire. Um, I'll be honest, I don't remember adding him to the shortlist, but that doesn't surprise me. Does he look good? I mean, he's quick. He's qu That's about it. He's not good. Contract status expired. Sorted by ability. Here we have a list of players. It annoys me that the top five are all players that need work permits, and I don't think I can sign any of them. I've already looked at Lewis today. Um, Sam Delforge was a player who I looked at a few episodes ago. He looks like a great centre mid, but he can't play centre attacking mid or defensive mid. And they're the positions we play. Hugo Silva could be a great little player. 21 years old, has some potential attacking mid. I don't need attacking mids. Manuel, I mean, 20 years old, could be good. Could also just be very mediocre. And his agent says he won't get a work permit. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, if we just look at players with contract status, expired, work permit, not needed. There are some players here that I should probably be taking a look at. Dejan Tetek here, 26 years old. Serbian player, actually not a bad defensive midfielder. Super consistent, great natural fitness. Talks about that need for a defensive midfielder. Immediately, I go and check his injury history. His recent injury history isn't disastrous. Then I look at what happened at the start of his career. Oh my word. He was out for 11 months with a torn hamstring. That's mental. Nathan Masimwe here is not bad. He can play left back and right back. He reminds me a bit of, of course, Brody. We've already got Brody Spencer who can do that all round fullback role. But I am potentially looking for another backup right back just to be safe. How much is Nathan going to want? How much do you want to hurt me? He wants to be a squad player. He wants £5,000. That's, that's ridiculous. I realise this might be an ongoing thing. There could be some players here with some really good ability. Players like Will Lankshire here, who looks pretty blooming serviceable. Decent striker. Probably not going to sign him, but I'm just curious. How much would he want? Okay, 8,000 pounds, never mind. Shadrach Oggy here has one of the greatest names ever. Uh, he can do left back and centre back. He can do left back and centre back. He doesn't play them, he does them. He lives them. Uh, 27 years old, super consistent, good in poor matches, might need a left back, has really good long throws. How much is he going to want? You know, hurt me here. Please don't hurt, he wants 4,600. Can't afford it. Harry Darling. Great name, good centre-back as well, really good aerial ability. I feel like he's going to fall into the same bracket of player that looks amazing, agrees to a lowish squad role, and then has outrageous demands. I mean, to be honest, £2,400 isn't that outrageous. If he'd signed for £2,000, um, it would make him the highest earner, but I'd probably sign him for that. Two-year deal, £2,000? Hmm. I don't know if he's necessarily what we need, but... he. He's pretty good. Of course, I've played my fair share of transfer windows here in Football Manager. I know I'm probably not going to get my first choices when it comes to players I come across here. The reality is all these players I've got scouted will probably have some big teams come in and just steal them away from me. Tom McIntyre here is not a bad little player. He has been playing for Reading. I need this backup centre-back and I need it kind of badly. We've got one player who could fulfil that role. I feel like Tom here could do a really good job for us as well. Super consistent, loves important matches, wants to be a fringe player. Also wants £4,000 a week. I think at this point, I'm just hoping that Harry Darling wants to join us and he'll do the job. Okay, right back. We've already looked at the sim way. He wanted too much. We've got Cousin Dawson here. Not really the wing back kind of defender I'm looking for. Brandon Lai, can play defensive mid, can play right back. He's not the craziest of players. I mean, he's just not good, is he? Finn Yeats here is a weird player. He can play defensive mid, but he is naturally a right back. He... Doesn't look awful, does he? He's a really well-rounded player. Doesn't have the craziest of physicals. Was playing for Sydney FC on loan. I mean, as a backup right back, I feel like you could do a lot worse than him. How much is he going to want? He wants to be a fringe player. How much is he going to want? I'm going to suggest £2,000 and then be laughed at by him. That sounds like a good plan to me. He wants 3600 It's just too much. Now here's the issue. My current highest done is on £1,800. Our wage budget sits at a comfortable margin where I can afford to spend a little bit more. 
I do have to be wary of the financial fair play somewhat. And on top of that, if I start offering one or two new players £3,000 a week, players of a similar squad role are going to want that kind of money too. And so if I go out and sign a fullback who's going to be a fringe player for £3,000, all the first team regulars are going to want £4,000 plus, And I can't deal with that situation right now. Just looking at right backs now, sorted by reputation. Hanji Monoga's come up. Remember Monoga from last year's Park to Prem? He was way better last year. He's not very good in this save game. I don't remember ever having a Filipino player before. Ayuba Jabang. That is a fun name to say, isn't it? Ayuba Jabang. I can't, so, it's fun, so fun to say, can't even say it. He was playing for Bath in the Vanarama National League South. Um, okay, probably not good enough for League One. It just, just the name looked fun. Okay, I've come to the conclusion looking for a right back might be a lost cause. Is there good left backs out there? Tyler Blackett used to be a mad player in football manager. He always had insane potential. Came through United's academy in real life. Uh, he's not that good here. Is she Samuel Smith? Looks mad. Released by Chelsea, 23 years old, 19 determination, 18 jump. Jumping reach. He is my kind of centre back. Has been playing in the championship. He's almost certainly going to want too much money. And yeah, I really like the idea of signing him. He wants to be a star player. He wants. Uh, I'm not even going to read out that number. Just as audio listeners, I'm sorry. It's a lot of money he's asked for. I'm not going into more details. And in case you were wondering, I do believe there are people who just kind of listen to these videos as podcasts. I assume it just sounds like the ramblings of a lunatic. But you know what? I can see the appeal of that. I don't want to say I'm panicking. I've looked for a very long time for fullbacks there, and I don't know how much of it is actually going to make the video. Um, I am just looking here at fullback options that our scouts have found and looked at. A sim way it was a player we've already tried to sign and he wanted too much. Sergio was a youngster playing in Spain. Obviously, we love our non-league Spanish youngsters. He actually got released, I believe, so he's now a free agent. I feel like the fact he doesn't have a work permit and he probably won't get a work permit is going to be problematic. But if he's available for £400 a week, I might just sign him without a work permit and see if we can get one on appeal or just loan him out for a bit and try and sell him on for some money. Just seems like a smart idea, really. The guy's got potential. I will admit, you know, he is more probably of a centre-back than a wing-back. He's got 6-6 six, six acceleration, but there is actually quite a lot to like about him. I am now just looking through all the other players that my scouts have been looking at just to see what's out there. My scouts are suggesting a player playing in Sweden called Kali Ringberg. He actually looks really good. Loads and loads of potential. Premier League standard. How much does he want? Doesn't want to join me. I love the fact that half my scouting assignments are just sending scouts to wander round Europe. You know, I just send them to random corners of Europe to look at players and see what they recommend. St Stanislav Bobcek, he's just been released by a Slovakian second division team and our scouts have found him and gone, he could be good. I mean, he could be, he's a winger. Rourke Beanie, just been released by Arsenal. He actually looks quite good, doesn't he? 19 years old. I'm trying to find the issue with him. I suppose the issue is his current ability and the fact he's a winger. But he can play centre attacking mid and he is either footed. He wants to be a breakthrough prospect. He wants £600 a week. He wants a release clause. We're getting rid of that. He's probably going to hate me for these negotiations. Look, I want to invest in you, mate, Rourke. I want to keep you around. You've got the Beanie as your last name. What's not to love? The, the answer is my demands. I did remove quite a lot there, but I am surprised he's turned down the option to talk to me immediately. What the dickens is this bloke? Hajalti Foralrison. Um, we'll call him Hajalti. Uh, I mean, he can jump, he can head, he can run. He's technically gifted, but he has only got eight composure and eight finishing. But he does look mental. His contract ends in six months. I can approach to sign him but he doesn't want to talk to me. But if I make a bid, maybe he will. He might not get a work permit, but I just like the idea of having an Icelandic striker who can't finish and can just run really quick and jump really high. I don't know about anyone else. It just sounds fun. If I do sign this guy, I probably have to get rid of Norman Hamilton to make it work. I just He just looks fun. Apparently he's got good championship ability and he's playing close to his full potential and he's a consistent performer. I love him. I love him. I need him. He has major reservations about negotiating terms, mate. Look, I'm going to make you a star player and we'll send you on a language course and I'll play you in your preferred role. Yeah, we can play you as an advanced board. I can do that. And aims for this year, reach the playoffs. Okay, I didn't expect that to work. He does actually want to talk to me. He wants £5,000 a week. He wants £5,000. Why do I think it might be worth it? Am I going crazy? I just compare him to Jude, and I know he can't really attack, and he's got the mentals of a snowflake. But there's so much to like about this guy. 
What, like, I don't know if these mentals are awful, but look at the technicals. Other than finishing, ignore his finishing. I don't think I can afford to do this. I don't think I should do this, but I am, I'm going to try and offer him £4,000 a week. This might be idiotic, this might be moronic, or it might be a stroke of genius. Okay, I've got him to accept an offer. The issue here is I don't have an ESC slot for him. So now I really need to sell Andrani if I want to bring this guy in. Do I really want to bring him in though? I think I do. I am now curious. Should we go through the rest of Iceland just in case there's more key players who are like 20 years old who just want to join me? Like Forreston here. Five caps for Iceland's national team. He wouldn't be interested. He wants to wait until a move nearer the end of his contract. His contract's expiring as well. He probably wouldn't get a work permit. Hmm. Shame. Just looking at the rest of the Icelandic national team here to see if there's any good Icelandic players that I should have on my radar. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to select them all and hit scout. Why not? At the moment in this transfer special, I found a centre-back who I might sign and make my highest earner, who's not awful, mind you, Harry Darling. He is quite good. And then I've got two players who I know won't get work permits joining us, one of which might join us on £5,000 a week. It's probably a stupid idea. Have noticed here, there are some clauses that we could sell. Bradley Edwards and Joe Richards. Two players who, of course, we've sold to Middlesbrough. Um, two good players with some potential. In the case of Bradley Edwards, we sold him for £1.4 million. We have a 50% of any profit. And right now, they are willing to give us... How, how much are they willing to give us? £322,000. So the question is, will Bradley Edwards ever sell for over £2 million? I have my question marks, but I think it might be worth holding out for him. The other player is Joe Richards, where I've agreed a buyout of £666,000. So, hmm, that is more tempting. Do I think he's going to get sold for more than £2.5 I know his value is really high and he might have some potential, but I do have my doubts over his overall ability. Like, he never really shone that much for us, did he? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell that. I feel like £666,000 is just too much to not take. And of course, with the rate at which we lose money at the moment, which is about £500,000 a month during the season when everything's running, uh, probably wise to get that 600000 We might need it. You guys can let me know if you think this is a moronic one. I don't exactly need the money, but it's kind of useful. Uh, AFC Wimbledon, Forest Green have made bids for Harry Darling. That could be a problem. Sometimes people ask, Jack, how long do you record for versus how long do you actually see? And with Park to Prem transfer specials, I try and edit them as I go. So I have already edited everything up to this point that I'm now talking over. We're over half an hour in. I've not made a signing. And as I've sat editing the video, I've looked at Thor Aronson here and realised... I am being an idiot. I cannot give this guy £5,000. But at this point, I just want to see if he might join us. Although then I do have to pay for the work permit. That is £20,000. I should just cancel this deal. And yet there's part of me that wants to keep it here. Mm. <laughs> I can't do it, can I? I can't. I'm going to be sensible. I know there's lots of you who have been the devil on my shoulder screaming at your monitors. Sign him! No, I can't do it. It's stupid. I've seen that now. It's funny, right? When I edit the videos, I kind of get the viewer perspective of you guys watching it. And I realise there's just some stuff that I look at and go, what are you doing, you moron? It's completely different when you're doing it in the moment, I swear. Right, okay, look, we are quite far into this episode. I have two players joining us. I really need to find some players. So I'm just now looking at players 21 and under, and I'm going to look through the positions that we need. Talks about the need for a defensive midfielder. Ollie Harrison here looks like he could be a pretty good player. Bit concerned about his inconsistency, but he's come through Chelsea's academy, and he is only 21 years old. He looks like he could be a pretty good kind of just back up defence in mid, which is all that we really need. I noticed that Exeter of League 2 have made a bid for him. We could sign him up. He does want an increase in wages, but his wages aren't too outrageous. I mean, they're kind of outrageous. At least these raises are. I'm going to offer him 1.6 thousand. I'll offer him a two-year contract extension upon promotion. And I will give him just a little bit of money up front here to try and lower his wage demand slightly. £40,000, £6,000 in agent fees. He's asking for 1.8. Can we do 1.6? We can do 1.6. I have no idea if he's going to choose us over Exeter. Obviously, we are a league above them. Our reputation is also worse than theirs. And to be fair, when you look at the list of teams interested in him, it wouldn't surprise me if someone else comes in and just gets him anyway. He is comfortably the highest rated kind of defensive mid who has at least doubtful interest in joining us. There are some other players here. Bailey Butter, 
Transfer listed by request at Dundee. I mean, this guy's just not a defensive midfielder. I mean, I suppose he could play as like a deep line playmaker or a Gista, but I feel like in our system, the defensive mids do need to be able to defend. Gareth Brown here of Bromley looks really, really good. 20 aggression, has great balance and great stamina. I mean, he's just an angry little ball winning midfielder, isn't he? Hate the fact he's injury prone. He has also got some really poor first touch and dribbling for a centre mid. And you can see here, fickle personality. Don't love that. He did play 38 games last year in League 2, and the year before that, 27 games. I feel like he could be a serviceable backup defensive mid. Obviously, the injury proneness is a little bit of a concern. How much are they going to want for him? Maybe a fair amount of money. His actual wage demands aren't too big, though. Yeah, Bromley are asking for over a million pounds. I could probably haggle it down to 600,000. He's not worth that. In terms of defensive mids with potential as an Icelandic player here, of course there is. Run Arson, 18 years old, plays for Valor. He does have bags of potential. I mean, the thing that I'm realising here is that of all the defensive mids we've looked at, the one who I think I could sign is Ollie Harrison, who is good. But beyond him, if I don't secure his signature, am I better off just having Liam Holt as the backup? Like, is Liam Holt that much worse than the players we're looking at? Like, if you compare him with Harrison, yes, he's a step down. If we compare him with Van Arsen, the Valor youngster, he's way, way better. Maybe Liam's just the play. The only other player who I could maybe promote would be Sean Nesbitt. We picked him up, you might remember, from Ballymena before. Uh, he's not a bad little player either. Also, I think it's Ballymena. There were lots of comments about the fact that I said Ballymena. Like, I do remember that, actually. There was only like 10 comments, I swear. But Sean here is not a bad defensive mid-option. Probably not ready for regular League One football. As a squad player, though, we could be worse. I feel like defensive midwise, if I can't pick up my first choice here in Harrison, maybe I don't need to panic about it. Of course, that really doesn't diminish the fact we are very short on defenders right now. Maybe defenders should be the focus. Defenders with potential, there are some here. There is this guy here, who apparently I have on my shortlist, who does look very good, doesn't he? Romanian, versatile defensive option, 19 years old. I mean, here's the issue. He's just not going to get a work permit, is he? I could turn on the filter to get rid of players that need work permits, but instead I like the pain of thinking I found players and then being disappointed. I might have found a player. I didn't think I was going to be able to sign this guy. Philip Lufner. Now, he's not the craziest of centre-backs, right? Czech Youth International, but he's part Scottish. He's, he's part Scottish. Is he actually good? I mean, he's not bad, is he? I suppose the question is, is he better than someone like Ngoi, who's already in the youth team? Um... I mean, it's marginal, isn't it? Ryan Morgan is a player who's been on my radar for a very long time. He plays for TNS, and he's been trying to force a move for years. And the reason I've been put off him, really, is because I don't think he'd ever be good enough to be a starter, and his wage demands were quite high. But actually, now, relative to the rest of our team, he might not be a bad little option. His value could be really good. His wages aren't going to be too crazy high. Can play centre-back and left-back, which is nice, although with his heading, probably wouldn't want to play him at centre-back. I've just made an offer to TNS of the lower end of his value, and they've accepted it. I suppose we'll hope his wage demands are equally lower than expected. There are actually a few okayly rated centre-backs here. Carl Hurley? I mean, he's injured, so probably not Carl Hurley. I'm going to be sensible. Uh, work permit chance, NA. Let's look at players that don't need work permits. I love the fact that Darren Rye shows up as a player possible to sign. His value is £4.5 million. There are some right back options here. Brendan Bonner of Sligo Rovers, or Sligo, it's definitely Sligo Rovers. He is available. He plays in Ireland. His value is £475,000, so it would definitely cost us that much. Presumably, yeah, that is a release clause. Could we get him for cheap? Cheaper than that? Probably not. Is he a £400,000 player? I mean, he might be, but uh, I don't think so. Ah, of course, I've shown some interest in Gareth Brown, and now a load of championship teams want him. Our offer for Morgan has been accepted. I am praying here that Morgan is going to ask for reasonable wages. Even if he asks for unreasonable wages, I might still sign him to be that backup left back and centre back option. New Saints want him back on loan. They can't have him. Uh, let's start negotiations here. He wants to be a fringe player. He wants £3,400. He wanted £3,500 as a week as his wages, but he didn't ask for a signing on fee. So if I half his wages, or rather take 1,500 off them, I am basically saving myself 75,000 pounds in wages. How about 2,000 pounds, but I'll give you 70,000 as a signing on fee. That is a fair deal. He's actually agreed to it. I'm, I'm thinking I might have to do this. It does mean that the total fee we're paying for him between the signing on fee and obviously the initial offer is 80,000 pounds for a two year deal. 
kind of think that's worth it just to keep his wage demands down for the immediate future. I do feel like he's quite a good squad player. Don't love the fact he's now our highest earner, mind you, but £2,000. I feel like at least is a marginal increase rather than me completely nuking the wages by signing an Icelandic player on £5,000 a week. Ricky Deanne Spencer asking for new contracts days apart. Uh, look, I just can't afford it. We'll just we'll just tell him it as it is. We can't afford it right now. Ricky D, you've got a really good lengthy contract still on you here, mate. Three more years of you. Stop crying. Okay, finally a transfer I actually wanted to get done. Ryan Morgan is going to join us. This guy is a very, very good player. Not sure how much he's going to feature as a regular starter, but for £2,000 a week, he doesn't come cheap, but... I feel like it's just a case of getting a deal done for a reasonable amount for a player who's definitely going to add something to our team. Rated highly by our staff, a little bit of potential to his game as well. He is naturally a centre-back, but to be honest, I think he is more likely this year to feature as our backup wing-back. Maybe lacks a little bit going forward, but he has some really good physicals and some really good mentals. You know, good teamwork, stamina and work rate. Just very desirable things alongside good acceleration and pace for a wing-back at this level. Some not-so-good news, Javain McCulloch, who came back from his loan on Ebb's fleet, uh, has just broken his leg. So, mm, that's not ideal. Did tell him he might play a bit in the first team uh, prematurely here. I'm just going to demote him. Three month injury. That's annoying. Wickham have made a bid for Ollie Harrison. I really want to get this guy at centre mid. I have a sneaking suspicion he's not going to choose us. And unsurprisingly here, uh, Sergio hasn't been granted a work permit. I'm going to appeal it just in case, but I don't think he's going to get it. Just have to hope we can convince him to actually join us, and then we'll loan him out again for the year. Also, Zen Hurt still doesn't have a work permit. I can't apply for one for a little while. Yeah, 80 days. He's going to have to go out on loan again as well. So looking at the team, definitely still need a backup goalkeeper of some kind. Left-back-wise now, I feel like between Chambers... And Morgan at left back. We've kind of got that area covered. I feel like these two guys can do the main job for us. And then the emergency backups. I mean, to be honest, it could be Ricky D, who's the emergency backup. Or it could be Brody Spencer. Both of those are right backs that can play left back. Speaking of the right back area, this is definitely the area where I think we still need to find just a, a young option who can just be the backup here. Brody Spencer will be on the bench, but he is kind of just designed to be Mr. Versatile. We're basically looking for a mini Ricky D. Still really hoping that Ollie Harrison's going to choose us. And then, of course, Harry Darling, another player with a load of interest in him. Not sure he's going to join us. If he doesn't join us... I don't know if I'll go and look for another centre-back, at least right now. I feel like just the right-back area is more of a concern. Centre-back-wise, I feel like we've got a serviceable setup here right now. Obviously, serviceable isn't exactly what you're aiming for, but it's kind of what we have to deal with. Don't know if this is a sign of the times. I'm looking at right-backs that are likely to get a work permit sorted by world reputation. We have here Tarek Jimenez. I feel like I've used this guy before in a football manager save game, and I can't remember when or where. I feel like I might have used him either in Iceland or maybe in Sweden back when I used to stream on the regular Football Manager. His face just looks familiar. He's not what I need right now. Joshua Rawlins here, free caps for Australia, would get a work permit. He's been released by Utrecht in the Eredivisie. He's not that bad. He's really not, as a right-back option who can also play defensive mid, I feel like we could do worse. His agent's telling me he wants £4,000. We've been here before with players, haven't we? It does feel like there's a load of new players that are showing up on this list that weren't showing up earlier. I wonder if it's just because we're getting further through pre-season that players are more likely to move. This guy here doesn't look that bad at all. I say he doesn't look bad. He's got good decisions and determination with some decent running. I mean, is that what you need to be good at this level? Maybe. I feel like I might be getting desperate. I realise I've been looking through these right-back options who are suddenly maybe interested in joining us. I'm just going to get rid of the position here and just see who's out there. 190 players who might want to join me. Who is there? Also, these are all players that are likely to get work permits. Samuel Justo was playing for Wolves for a fair few years here. He was signed for 1.7 million. He doesn't look bad. I mean, I don't need an attack in mid, but I'm just curious. How much does he want? He wants more than I can afford. Let's change this transfer interest into slightly interested. Just to get rid of the players who are going to tell me, yeah, you're cool, but you can't afford me because those players annoy me. I know I shouldn't want to sign players based on their names, but Wolfgang Moosbrugger. It's one of the coolest names ever. I just wish he was better. Okay, I've decided to trial a load of the young players that I've been told will get work permits just to see if any of them are actually any good because maybe one of them's good. And if all of them are bad, I will be sad. Also, we have got some low moves here for Zenner. I mean, Zenner is actually developing and actually looks like he could be quite a good player. Considering we signed him for nothing, we are likely to make some money on him. In terms of the options I've got here to loan him to... 
you know what? Lechia in the top division of Poland. That seems smart. And of course, Lechia, friend of Park to Prem, for having a fantastic away day. The only away day where you can go bungee jumping. You can see here, there were some players I wanted to trial. I've hit the limit for the number of trials we can have. I probably should just look through these guys manually. This guy looks quite good. Why do my scouts not rate him? I guess he is a bit of a pace merchant. Okay, I've now got 50 trialists who have joined me. Someone here has to be good. Okay, I'm looking at the players that have joined us here. There are some players that at least have good star ratings. Of course, star ratings can be complete lies. We are just going to have to look through these players manually and see if any are any good. But there are actually some okay players here. Amen Carry, defensive mid. I mean, I've talked about the need for a defensive mid. This guy's actually really, really good. He was playing for PSG. He has caps for the youth national team in France. If we compare him with Harrison, who we're looking to sign, you could even argue he's a slightly better player. I've really spent two minutes bigging him all up there. If I go and approach to sign him, he wants to be an important player. Apparently he has potential to be a leading championship player. Wants to be a regular starter. Wants £7,000. Carry, why? Wasn't sure I needed another left back, but this guy's actually quite good. 20 years old, caps the German national youth team. Bit potential. His current ability is decent. How much does he want a week? He wants to be a breakthrough prospect. He wants £1,800. Mate, if you will sign for 1300 like we can be friends. Also, you have got to sign a slightly longer deal. He really wants a lot of money. Look, I can't, I can't give you it, mate. I can give you 1500 and that really is testing my limits. Okay, £1,500 accepted. There is a £32,000 signing on clause. It's just a shame he can't play right back. If he could play right back, it'd be perfect, wouldn't it? I guess I could just train him to play right back. He's got a reasonable right foot. We Drago here. Fantastic neck. No idea how this guy is going to qualify for a work permit. He's been playing in the second division of the Ivory Coast for ages, but apparently he might get a work permit. I mean, I do need a backup goalkeeper. Wants to be a backup. Wants £700. Oh my, I know he's injury prone. He's a decent League One player. I'm happy with this. Friendship ended with Simkin. We Drago, the big goalkeeper. He is my new best friend now. Chesterfield, Doncaster, Grimsby Town and Mansfield have all made offers for We Drago. How have they all discovered this guy? They've, they've seen that I've got him in on trial and now they're trying to steal him away from me. He did have quite low demands to begin with. I'm going to offer him a little bit more and hope that he'll join us. Uh, three year deal. How does a three year deal sign? He loves it. Sutton, Wickham and Bromley have made bids for Charis as well. What is happening here? As soon as I go in for these players, other teams want them and it's annoying. Okay, it's time for the second wave of trialists to come in. I'm not really expecting to find any more good players, but to be honest, the last batch of trialists, it gave me better results than anything we'd done before during this summer. All those players have joined us. I don't think any of them are actually any good. I'm not noticing any new names towards the top. There's loads of good left backs who have joined me on trial. I need a right back. The only right back who's joined on trial who looks like he could be good is Vladimir here, who can't defend. He's not a right back. He might think he is. You're not, son. Vito Cake here is a player I looked at. It's probably not said Cake, but I'm going to refer to him as Cake now because he can play defence in mid and he can play attack in mid. Obviously, the only other centre mid we are currently looking at is... A player who's not showing up here. Have I been turned down and not realised it? Ah, yeah. Uh, Harrison accepted Exeter's offer. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I do need a centre mid. Vito, how do you compare to Harrison? I feel like he's comparable. Kind of. Do you have reasonable demands? He wants to be a fringe player. He wants 5,000. Mm, never, never mind. If we Drago doesn't join us, and Charis here doesn't join us, and then also Darling doesn't join us, I don't know what we've done today. I will be annoyed myself. I'm beginning to get annoyed. Uh, Darling's gone to Port Vale. To be fair, they have off offered him almost £4,000, so I can't really blame him. Desperate times call for desperate measures. I'm up in the scouting range to Worldwide. There has to be a right back somewhere in the world for me. Apparently, Zapata here might get a work permit. He's Colombian. He actually doesn't look awful, but he's not really a wing back. Jorge Montenegro. Uh, mm, he's a right back, apparently. He's a right back with seven acceleration and six pace. Okay, then. Anderson here is an Uzbekistan international who would get a work permit playing in the third division of Brazil. I love football manager. I, I'm going to be honest, not sure he's what we need, but he is actually quite good. I mean, he's not great. He's, he's fine. He's not good enough for us. I mean, I've not found a right back through this method, I'm afraid to say. Uh, there wasn't actually that many new options available, but I now feel compelled to go and look at players in all other positions who might get work permits who play outside of Europe. 
this might be the dumbest set of player parameters I've ever set. I'm just looking at players anywhere in the world who have youth caps now. Like this guy who plays for the Venezuelan team, Monagas, uh, or Monagas, never heard of them. I'm not familiar with Venezuelan football. I think that's obvious. This goalkeeper plays for River Plate. He's 19 years old. He's got caps for the under-20 Argentina national team. I feel like he's not better than my backup goalkeepers. <laughs> what am I doing? I'll tell you what's happened there. I've seen River Plate and got excited, haven't I? Uh, South Korean goalkeeper? Yeah, he's not that good. Shin Hyung Ju uh, might want to join us. He plays for Daegu in South Korea. Yeah, I don't need an attacking mid. How about a Chilean goalkeeper? Yeah, he's awful. Look at that average rating, 5.6. I don't want to sound entitled. I feel like at this point, as I scroll through this dross, I deserve to find a player. Just as a reminder, these players are meant to be likely to get work permits. Like if any of them are actually any good, like this guy here, Mike McCartney, he's not that good. He would, he would get a work permit, breakthrough prospect, 500 pounds. I'll take Mike McCartney for 500 quid. He is kind of the backup for if we Drago turns me down. But at this point, I feel like he probably is going to turn me down. Mike's not a bad plan B. I'll tell you what, the scenes if I actually find a player looking through all of this who looks amazing, it will be the best day ever. I feel like that's just what I'm telling myself to keep myself going with this search. Last year's Park to Prem was the year of the Uruguayans. I'm kind of surprised that any of these players are actually interested in joining me, to be honest. I genuinely wonder if I had my ESC slot, is there just a player who actually doesn't need a work permit like these guys who would be interested in joining me from like Nacional, who'd be amazing? I'd like to think there would be. I think I've gone through every single player in this 130 player list. Uh, I've sent all the scouts to look at them. If I've missed any who are good, they will let me know. I'll tell you now, I do feel bad for my scouts. I really do send them to the far reaches of the universe, don't I, to look at players. I imagine all the YouTube montages for these players they're going to have to watch. 50 minutes into this episode, we have our second signing, uh, Sergio. He doesn't even have a work permit. <laughs> but I think he's quite good. Maybe he'll get one eventually, I hope. I don't know about you guys, I just think he could be decent. For £400 a week, yes, it's an absolute punt. But if he comes good, he'll be amazing. Obviously, now I do actually need to hope this one will loan him for the year, play him regularly, and he will actually develop. I'm fuming here, because I've seen the Drago move delayed to work permit news item come in, right? Thinking, oh, he's decided to come to us, he might get work permit. No, he's agreed to go to Chesterfield, but because he's on trial at us, I get notified he's getting a work permit as if he's my player. I'm so angry. I'm terminating his trial. Get out of here. Mike, Mike, please don't turn me down, Mike. I've not even scouted Mike. We probably should scout. I'm just going to sign him. I need to make signings. He played for LAFC's second team. He must be good. Mate, probably not. Okay, we Drago's turned us down, but fret not because Mike McCarthy has agreed to sign for us. We just need him to get a work permit. Imagine if it gets turned down now. If you were wondering, by the way, Jack, how long have you been sat recording this episode for? Uh, currently, four and a half hours, including editing. It's been a long day. And now Portsmouth have made a bit of 1.9 million for Ricky D. That's a lot of money. Let's distract ourselves from that by looking at the fact we've got loan offers here for Sergio. Everyone liked that, and every one of these offers want to play him as an important player. I love that even more. Okay, now for real, Ricky D. I mean, here's the issue. I've spent the entire episode looking for a right back, unsuccessfully finding a right back. This guy's my starting right back with a guide value of 2.2 to 4.7 million. Three years left on his current deal. They've had the audacity to bid... I mean, a bid that is a guaranteed, what, £2 million? It might rise to 2.5? Get out of my face, Portsmouth. I feel like the game is mocking me. The game see me looking for a right back and thinks just a mess with me, they're going to bid for my right back. Call me crazy. I feel like this feeling is far too frequent, isn't it? This happens far too often during transfer specials. I feel like when you're at the upper levels, like high Premier League team, it's way easier to find players because there's maybe, I don't know, a thousand players to search for that could possibly fit your team's quality. When you're at this level there are so many more options out there but to get the really good bargains and good buys you just have to look way more and so transfer windows kind of at this level they just take way longer in a few years time i'll love the premier league transfer specials they'll they'll be fun i'll have loads of money there'll be p players begging to come to me at the moment, I feel like I have to beg players. Oh, so Charis has now joined Mansfield. I really liked this guy as a left-back option. I really, really, I really liked him. Get out, terminate the trial. Not sure why I said that so, like, sinisterly. It's, it almost sounded like, you know, Mr. Burns released the hounds or kind of like I was ordering a hitman to take him out. Maybe I will order a hitman to take out this fictional football manager player. That's where my head's at right now. 
he would have been really good, wouldn't he? He would have been really good. I can't believe Mansfield are just abusing the fact that I have this worldwide scouting to wait for me to trial players, then they sign them away from me. I'm fuming. The temptation to sign this guy because his name is Bro is real. There's been lots of good names today. That's the only thing keeping me going looking for players, the names. I feel like a big issue I've got is that because our team reps so low, we just get turned down by players, you know, in favour of other English clubs, even if they are in leagues below us. It's, yeah, tricky. As soon as I find a player and make a bid for them, someone else goes in. We looked at Samuel Smith earlier and he wanted, what, £12,000? I was hoping he might have lowered his demands. He doesn't even want to talk to me. The season, by the way, doesn't start until the 4th of August. So although the episode might end in the near future, mostly because it's getting dark outside and I need to go to bed. I say it's, go it's, it's gone midnight, just behind the curtain here of Work the Space HQ. It's very, very late. It's not helping my mental state, I feel like, at this point. But at the same time, you know what? Transfer specials are about bringing you on an adventure. The struggles, the feelings I'll have to endure. I hope you're really... in. Bracing it. Um, Antonio here, my scouts are recommending. He's very good. He's a good goalkeeper, isn't he? Do they think he's going to get a work permit? They do think he'll get a work permit. Should I be going in for him? I mean, I've got Mike McCartney who we're currently scouting. How does Mike compare with Antonio? Hmm, I mean, there's not actually a world of difference. And this is just to be the backup goalkeeper. I'm going to trust Mike. In Mike, we trust. These players, by the way, are just all the players I was told would get work permits that I'm just scouting en masse. I'm just hoping one of them might be good. Josh, now is now's not the time, mate. Now is not the time to be complaining about wages. We can't afford it. Leave me alone. At this moment in time, Mike is the only player we're looking to sign. When do we find out about the work permit? Tomorrow. I am being asked if I want to follow up on my interest in Antonio. I mean, he's a good goalkeeper, but I don't need him. I totally forgot. I have Finn Brundle here, who is our third best goalkeeper right now alongside Isaac Warren. Is Finn good enough to be the backup? I've already paid for the work permit stuff now for Mike McCartney. Uh, is Finn better than him? No, I'll tell you what. This guy is better than Finn, I think. Kind of. Just about. Let's just say he is. Nod our heads and move on. Does that sound good? Yeah, he's definitely better than Finn. There is this bloke loan listed by Man City. He does actually look quite good and he is a right back. A loan's just the answer. I hate that loans might be the answer. They want me to pay £8,000 a week of his wages. Loans are not the answer. Kevin Reed here, 19 years old. He's on £16,000 a week. There's no chance I can get him for cheap, no. United want me to pay £11,000 a week of his wages. A full application for Andrade's work permit after the expiry of his ESC work permit has been submitted. I hope he gets it. I've never had one of these work permits before. We already know he's shorter than minute, so I just have to hope they've been impressed by his San Marino in performances or something. Good news! Mike has signed for us. Mike, backup goalkeeper Mike, super Mike, £500 a week for this guy. Bargain. I love this. This is why star ratings are a lie, everyone. Mike McCartney, three star credibility. Josh Keeley, Two and a half star credibility. Now let us compare them. Don't trust the stars. Just don't trust. They're all lies. Okay, is Andrani... <laughs> I was about to say, is Andrani going to get his work permit? Jude's injured to start the season. In an attempt to get our players match shop during pre-season, a few of our players have been playing in the under-21 friendlies, and he's got injured in one. Brilliant. Going to be honest, didn't realise our players were doing that. Uh, I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Automatically make unfit players available for the first team. No, we're not doing that anymore. That was stupid. Oh my God, I can't believe it. Andrani's been granted a work permit. That means we can sign someone. We have an ESC slot. We have an ESC slot. That Ah, screw everything. Who is, who is the best player I can sign who doesn't need a work permit? I mean, there's got to be someone good here. Junior Furpo. He's 32 years old. He can't play right back. Ne never mind. Daniel. Damn, Daniel. Uh, no, that would not be a good use of my ESC slot, would it? Of the players I've actually got scouted, Raul Decker might be the option, or Piquet, who we talked about right at the beginning of, I believe, today's episode, although it feels like a lifetime ago. Annoyingly, they are both more attacking options, where really, I probably should be using it on a defender. Is there a big, fat, sexy defensive mid? I feel like that's what I need. I could spend a very long time looking through 2,000 players here. I'm just looking at defensive mids as well. I've just spent a very long time looking through players. I now don't want to waste the ESC slot, and there's not anyone who's jumping out at me. I'm beginning to wonder if the best bet here is just to sign someone strictly based on their potential. Just try and find some gem that we can forge into one of our own players. But who that player is, I don't know. I love the fact that my scouts just have a weird, obscure obsession and bit of knowledge when it comes to Icelandic football. For some reason, we love Iceland for our scouting. I remembered the guy who was playing for Orlando Pirates, the striker, and thought, maybe I could go in for him. 
He's already been signed by AC Milan. I was too late. How much did they pay for him? £325,000. I feel sick. There's really a temptation just to try and get a transfer done here for the sake of it this episode, but my concern is I signed someone and then regret it. So I'm not going to just use my ESC slot now. I've come to the conclusion we're probably not finding a defence in mid. So Liam Holt, welcome to the first team, my friend. I hope he'll be good if we need him to play. With his addition to the squad, it sees the first team look like this. Of course, Jude is now going to be injured to start the season, which is really, really annoying. But besides him, we are injury free. It does mean that for the likes of Sam Fay or Espinosa, one of them is going to be starting the season. And I'm not sure either of these two players is necessarily ready to step up and be a regular starter at League One level, but... I mean, there's only one way to find out. I think what I've got here is kind of my blocked out 11 to start the year, unless I think I'm going to start Gasparini over Sean McLaughlin, which I am tempted to. Am I really biased towards Luigi Gasperi here? I just look at him, I think he's a really good centre-back, and at 20 years old, he needs game time. I suppose if he doesn't perform, we can always just bring in McLaughlin, right? I do feel like one thing that we've got here is a pretty strong bench outside of the attacking options that I kind of already acknowledged are going to be slightly weaker because of the approach we're taking. When it comes to the bench and subs, we are lacking maybe a little bit of depth, but to be honest, in spite of the lack of transfers and the number of sales we've made... We're not in a disastrous situation. A squad of 23 players might face some challenges over the course this year, but it's not like we're wrapping things up today with the transfer window closing. There's still time to do stuff before the season starts in, well, it's still almost three weeks away. I say, I say almost three weeks away. No, it, it's two weeks away. Who am I kidding? I always feel like with transfer specials where we don't get a load of wheeling and dealing done, that I owe you guys an apology. And every time I do that, people leave lovely comments saying, stop being an idiot. We watch for your meltdowns. I hope that you've enjoyed what you've watched today. Um, I know some people probably think, Jack, you'd do it for the theatre. You'd do it to milk it. You could go out there and sign a load of players. I feel like I am overly cautious in the market. I never want to completely nuke the wage budget. We have got a new highest earner who is a fringe wingback option. Don't necessarily love that, but it's just kind of the world we find ourselves in. I've just spent the last hour of my life stressing about a ride back. Hit stop record, edited the video and thought, I'm done now. <laughs> I've just realised Sean Nesbitt can play right back. Now, he's not a great right back, but he's better than anything I've looked at. Someone was definitely writing about this in the comments. I am an idiot. But back to past Jack, who was doing the outro. Oh, I hate everything. Anyway, today has been a mammoth long episode. Not only for you watching, but for me recording and editing it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you got to the end, leave a comment. Let me know your favourite player in the team currently. Just with no context, just the name of one of these lovely players listed on your screen here. Do, 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 go down below, let us know people actually engage, and watch to the end of these. Besides all of that, have a lovely rest of your day. Tomorrow we will be kicking off our new season. What season is it? It is season number one, two, three, four, five, six. Season seven. Definitely don't have to count the seasons I've played. I, ignore all that. Season seven tomorrow. I'll see you guys for it. Thank you so much for your support as always. Tomorrow we kick off the season. Hope you guys are ready. I'm most certainly not. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. What has today been? I don't even know.